one look into another edition of Tuesdays with Live a Disability Policy for All. Today we are we're going to be interviewing John Tita, who is the Associate Direct Executive Director here at AUCD for Research and Policy. To, today we are going to be interviewing John about Manishka. So welcome, John. Thanks, Liz. The first question is, what is managed care and why is it important for people with disabilities? Great question. Uh, managed care actually is a concept that started almost 50 years ago in my home state of Minnesota. There was a doctor there who dealt with patients uh, who had polio and post-polio syndrome at a place called the Sister Kenny Institute. And he saw that in his work as a pediatric neurologist that the hospital wasn't making decisions that were in the best interest of the patient. They were actually making decisions in the best interest of the hospital. So managed care started as a way to really put the patient at the center of all of the healthcare services that they were receiving. And this was back in the early 1970s. Today as a strategy, it's not necessarily being used that way. And if you look on the uh, CMS uh, website, they talk about managed care as doing really three things. So if we think about it as a three-legged stool, you have costs and wanting to control cost. We have service use or utilization. So making sure that services are being coordinated and that they aren't being uh, duplicated in any way. And finally, uh, it's about quality. So those three legs of that stool, if you will, looking at the cost of services, looking at what services are being delivered, and what's the quality of those services. So trying to develop strategies and ways of managing care for individuals around those three themes is really what managed care has become today. For, for, for our audience who might not know what CMS is, can you just... Sure, CMS is a federal government agency that funds uh, and really controls uh, uh, the policies related to the two main public health programs. So Medicaid, which provides medical services and home and community-based services, and also the Medicare program, which provides medical services mostly for people over the age of 65, but also for about 9 million people under the age of 65 who have disabilities. So that's the federal agency that coordinates those programs. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is, are managed care and Medicaid connected? And if so, how? Uh, increasingly, Medicaid and managed care are very connected. Um, and that can be challenging for people with disabilities. What I talked about in the history of managed care and where it got started, people were only looking at medical services. So if you were getting care in a hospital or an outpatient clinic or even going back to the hospital to get services for uh, a condition or, uh, or a challenge that you were having, from a health perspective, so really only focusing on the medical. But with Medicaid, we're seeing increasingly that states are making decisions about home and community-based services, so non-medical services. Things like care coordination, or home-based services, or even day programs that people with uh, developmental disabilities might uh, go to. Um, and putting that in a managed care context where they're looking at, yes, quality, and yes, what services are being provided, but it's really the third leg of that stool that I've talked about that's often a major concern for states, and that's the cost. So are we doing what's in the best interest of individuals on the Medicaid program in a managed care context? I think that's possible. 
Uh, but uh, we need to look at and ask questions as a community. Are these decisions about managing the care? And in some cases, that means making decisions for people, uh, especially people on the Medicaid program and people with disabilities. But are we also making decisions with people and in the best interest of individuals with disabilities in particular in a way that honors the history of managed care and where it got started almost 50 years ago. So we have a couple of dozen states now uh, that aren't just using managed care as a strategy for the medical services I talked about, but also for those home and community-based services as well. So in an organization that is often primarily medically focused, are people making decisions who have a good understanding of those home and community-based services? Do they understand the importance of those home and community-based services? And we know that often it's getting access to those home and community-based services that keeps people healthy and active in their communities and saves money where we don't need or use the medical services. So. Thank you. Can I ask another question that I may not have thought about before, but I think it relates um, with um, all this issue around Medicaid and the issue around just fighting and saving Medicaid. Mm -hmm. If Medicaid should be taken away, what would that matter? Would that matter to manage care? I think some of the changes that they are proposing for uh, the Medicaid program would result in fewer people being served by the Medicaid program. Remember that today Medicaid is what we call an entitlement program. Now that's a fancy word. What that really means is if you're eligible for the program, you have a right to enroll in the program and get served by the program. Some of the changes that are being proposed today would say that it's no longer an entitlement or not everyone who qualified for the program would be eligible to get services in the program and states would have the choice to decide how much money they spent on the program. So, so that's important to remember. Uh, managed care as a strategy under that scenario I don't think would go away. I think many states the majority of states are now using managed care as a strategy to make sure that services aren't being duplicated, uh, that um, people are getting uh, the services that they need, uh, not always uh, the services that they may want, and measuring the quality of those services, which is critically important. Okay, thank you. And the last question is, is there anything else that would be helpful for the audience to, to know about Medicare and living in the community? I think the most important thing about managed care, and if managed care is to, again, fulfill the promise uh, from where it started almost 50 years ago, people with disabilities uh, need to be front and center in creating their own plans and setting their own goals not just for their medical services, but especially those home and community-based services as well. If the managed care plan, and these are being provided by insurance companies, uh, is um, the one who's in charge of developing that plan and responsible financially for the, the care that's um, being delivered under that insurance plan. So it's about personal control, it's about personal choices, putting people with disabilities at the center of their care, whether that's medical or community-based, so that we all can uh, live as independent and productive uh, lives as we want to in the community. It, it sounds to me like self-determination. You're exactly right. And there are some managed care plans that do that well. Uh, not all managed care plans do that well. So as advocates, we need to continue to educate them and coach them uh, so that managed care can work as a strategy for people with disabilities. Thank you. And if you have any questions about this or any other policy issues, 
Please go to the AUCG webpage and look for this week's in brief. And if you have any questions or comments about this week's Tuesdays with Liz, please leave them in the space below. Thanks. Thanks again, John. Thank you, Liz. Bye.